Where's the let's, let's give him a little. Give him a little. Uh, where, where's the logo? If you can see. Represent. There's Cav the logo. Oh. Too. All that. All that. All that. Uh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, he's just good. Yeah, man, these like this is one some of his first, some of the first ones I did make, and they got these. Oh man. Yeah. Welcome back to the Headbangers Podcast, where your host Nathan and Brad here today. We're joined by Isolate. How are you guys doing to start off with? Yo, good, yeah. Yeah, good. good. Pretty, pretty good, yeah. Pretty well. Can we swear? Yeah, of course, man. Oh, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Isolate, an appropriate name for the last year. <laughs> so. Don't even get started on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he did fuck all. <laughs> so, in contrast to that, I want to start off with something like a icebreaker. What's the funniest tour story you guys have had? Or gig story? Uh, too many. Uh, which, oh, which you, you, you put his on, on the spot here. <laughs> nah, don't worry. Sorry, take your time. Yeah. I been on it. Probably um, Sam. No, sorry with Sam. He's got his headphones in on his own. Our guitarist uh, just vibing away to whatever we're vibing away to. On his own in a bedroom. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just with his headphones in listening to like... Like, I don't know, drum and bass or something. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that's kind of been the gig story for everyone right, over the last year. Yeah. yeah. That's probably the funniest one. I wasn't there, but I've heard it. It was no, quite, yeah, quite yeah, funny. Yeah. <laughs> even, even sounds, sounds mental, man. <laughs> I mean, the funniest, the funniest I've got to say is um, fuck it, let's out him. Uh, so we were loading out a load of gear from this age ago, back in Scotland, we were playing um, again before he joined the band. Uh, um, and we're loading a fuck, fuck load of gear out to uh, this NCP car park across the way. So we've got like a proper heavy, heavy rig and everything. And then Sam, the guitarist, he's, he's got this biff in his mouth, this joint. And then we're going into this NCP car park. We put the, put the gear down to have, have a little bit of a rest right outside the car park. And he decides to light up this joint. I'm like, bro, you can't smoke that in here. We're inside. He goes, Bro, what I'm smoking is illegal. You think I care where I'm smoking it? I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? You've got me on that one. <laughs> He's got a very good point. I can't yeah. that one. <laughs> um, why is it? Is like, like, to be fair, like if you're smoking weed, if anyone gives gives a whiff, they're gonna be able to smell like it. Smell it in my what? Exactly. So it don't yeah. matter if you're inside or outside. Exactly. That's the thing. That's like, too right, true. Right, that. Fair enough, mate. Fair enough. <laughs> I remember when I got COVID and I, after it, I had like really, I, I couldn't smell. Um, and I remember like, I remember that when my sense of smell came back, um, I was walking around and when someone lit a bifter, I was like, oh, I can smell a bifter. And I was like, oh, I can smell a bifter. I was like, smell it, fuck. Excitement. <laughs> oh, mate, I was so happy. I was never, never been happy to smell like the smelliest weed on the fucking planet before. I was there like, oh my God, I can smell. It was, mate, honestly, it was like a, like God touched my nose. I was like, ah, amazing. <laughs> there he I've is. missed this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like one thing as well, I want to jump, kind of jump into is how did you all meet and how did the band start? Oh God, that was, which we go. So these guys, uh, Rob and Sam was already like in a band, I guess, called Ice Little Witness before. And uh, I was in previous bands when I was like younger. And I got asked to come for a rehearsal because I wasn't actually in a band at the time. So one of the guys, uh, if you know on Hollow Ground, Ryan tagged me, I think, Ryan? Or one of my mates tagged me in a status of these guys looking for a vocalist. I went down, had a practice, and then, yeah, just started from there. Uh, turns out I'd known Rob, like, 10 years yeah. previously. Yeah, just met each other around the scene. It was, like, it was quite funny because, like, I, was, I wasn't really in Isolate Witness, the, like, previous version of what, whatever it was. Yeah, I'm just yeah. sort of like helping out with them and uh, like filling in on guitar. And then I, I really liked them, but I like, yeah, should probably like rebrand. Um, so we eventually decided to sort of sack off, isolate the witness, bring the name down and what have you. And then uh, we needed new members as the vocalist moved down to London. And there was a lot of really shitty old demos and stuff like that. So then um, I always wanted Jamie in the band and like, cause I'd known him in like through bands for ages and he was in for what I thought he was in this band called Zealous. Zealous? Yeah. 
zealous, zealous, yeah, zealous, zealous. Like zealous. Yeah. zealous. <laughs> um, and like, I, I was like on the verge of messaging him, like, why the fuck would he want to join this shit? Like, I'm like, he's never going to come for that. He's in zealous, like, they're, they're smashing it. And then, uh, then the current bassist at the time, he messaged me, like, oh, I've messaged my mate Jamie. Um, he's, he's, he's quite interested and he's wanting to come down. I was like, what you mean, Jamie Dewhurst? And they were like, <laughs> like, he was like, yeah. So I goes, oh, fuck, I didn't think it, no, oh, oh, shit. Have you, sh- have you sent him the, which demos have you sent him? And he was like, oh, I've sent him the ones that I've got. I'm like, oh, they're shit. So I'm like, instantly <laughs> like, I'm on, I like message him. I'm like, Jamie, please, right? All right, listen to these demos. It's so much, please, please come down. <laughs> so yeah, um, he did come yeah, down. Yeah, I went down, pretty much joined that day. And then we decided to like rebrand, change the name to isolate, uh, scrap everything we had previously and then just like st- rewrite yeah. and rework on everything else. And then that's how Isolate was born, I guess. And then our drummer at the time couldn't do it anymore for whatever reasons he had. Uh, so then we put like a uh, feelers out into the world of drumming, which is like very rare because there's yeah. like 10 drummers in the whole of Yorkshire. And the North- <laughs> oh, yeah. They're always oh, taken. Yeah. All the good yeah. ones are taken. For some reason, Tucker decided to put out this status and I was like, yeah, okay, I'll comment on that. And... Then, yeah, yeah. We've, we've got our tuck now, which is good. So, yeah, we're finally what we are today, I guess. Yeah. Oh, nice. Good stuff. I always find uh, bassists and drummers are the hardest to find. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's shit tons of guitarists, never any bassists or drummers. Like, yeah, that's, I that's remember right. when I first started yeah. mine, I was there, like, I, I think we didn't have a bassist for about a year. We're there, like, how is it, how is it this hard? To find a fucking bassist, I was there like, I'd have more like fine on the PS5 to be honest, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, Mate, yeah. yeah. I'm like, it, it was probably easier because I, I remember when, go on. I was just gonna say that's why we hadn't had a bassist up to this point, really. Like, we just backing track the, the bass, all you know, it gets sent out to a bass amp and what have you. So it's the same as having one, but yeah, they're just too unreliable and what have you. So, and too few of them. I've got many stories about that. Uh, I'll, I'll, leave, I'll, I'll leave it until next time. <laughs> yeah, too much but, drama. Yeah, um, it, yeah, it, it's incredibly fucking hard. And as well, it's good that you kind of rebranded as well because like, I think it's always good to have that, that little rebrand. Um, yeah, like, no offense to the other guys oh, yeah. in, in before, but they had like a bit of a bad rep yeah, from mm-hmm. being like, just being daft, you know, like yeah. drunk and playing sets. and Yeah, and they were all young at the time yeah. when, when that was made. And it, essentially, I just, I liked... When I joined them, I was like, I like all you lot, but I think it's a bit... It's a bit of a mouth. Yeah, it's a bit, and yeah. Isolate the Witness had people knew who they were, so it was like better to just, right, this is what we are now. We are Isolate. And yeah. We'll go from this point onwards and yeah. go forwards. Yeah. Just like Isolate just rolls off the tongue like a lot better. Yeah, like better. just straight Isolate. Yeah, there we go. Like, yeah, some, something no... about, sort of about like one worded bands, just definitely more memorable, I'd say. Yeah, definitely. It's 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 all a trend at the moment, anyway, and it's so. Yeah, that's very it's true. Funny that you mentioned demos as well, because like I think every band's had that like that demo that they've made where they're like, "Oh no, I hope no one ever hears this." <laughs> yeah. Like I remember when when I when my band started, we literally wrote the demo, put it on Bandcamp, didn't promote it or anything. We just wanted it there as a placeholder until like the track that we were actually working on, you know, like or on Spotify. I remember we had like a, a promoter recently message and saying, Hey, we really liked, I really liked your demo. Um, do you want to do a gig? And I'm like, you listen to the demo <laughs> <laughs> and you liked it. Oh no, please. No. <laughs> I, I went on Bandcamp recently. got like a couple hundred people listen to it. And then like someone going, yeah, this is some good shit. And I just instantly pictured this guy in like a dark room, just single light with his laptop there. He's been listening to like demos all his life. He's got like all the cassette tapes behind him. He goes, yeah, finally, yeah, yeah. yeah so much, <laughs> so much different. <laughs> yeah, he's there like finally. Yeah, this the best is kind of gratification. Like. Finally, I, I remember when my, my girlfriend went, "Oh, let me hear the demo." I was like, "You don't want to trust me." Yeah. Like, put it, I put it on, the, I put it on in the car, and I was there like, just so you know, right? This is shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, please don't judge me on this. Because I, I remember writing the lyrics in like a day, being like, it's just a demo, it doesn't fucking matter. Did it, and I was like, ah, oh, no, never mind. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had like a similar experience recently, like not with obviously music, but when I was doing this music video that I'm currently editing, and I've, I'm showing the guy that I'm making it for, and I'm showing it to Nathan, I'm like, listen, guys, just so I remind you once again, this is a rough cut, this is not finished. Because so as guess you get any questions, like, oh, well, this looks about a place. Like, no, it's, it's, it's just, it's in the process, it's not done yet. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, the thing is with us, um, more 
more so over COVID and lockdown and what have you, we've been doing like virtual writing sessions. So it'd be like me at the at the main rig at the um at the computer and what have you, and then I'll like zoom in or Skype or whatever to the rest of the guys. And so like Jamie will be at his house and he's got no recording set up. Yeah. So it'll be like telling me the lyrics and the rhythms and I, I don't <laughs> scream I, I just do the cleans um just talking so, them so, so i'm like i'm there like recording into the demo like just me talking the lyrics like like and it's so shit it's like me literally just going and the screaming <laughs> will be cut and i'm like what the fuck it ever it is and then there's a full track <laughs> with me just talking the lyrics over it until he can get over to re-record them and it's like I really nice. Is this. It just sounded like Scooter. <laughs> it's like Scooter with metal behind it. It's great. It sounds pretty good to be fair. <laughs> i tell you what though, Scooter have made some right fucking bangers in the past though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't get me started on Scooter. I fucking love Scooter. Have you ever seen that uh, music video, Scooter? Um, it's got Wiz Khalifa feature in it and it's the funniest like Wiz Khalifa for feature because how they reveal it is there's like a suction cup on a tit and like they pull it away and it's Wiz Khalifa's mouth so Wiz Khalifa <laughs> is literally a tit in the video just singing and it's the weirdest fucking video you'll ever watch like, I was watching like was that Wiz Khalifa's mouth I was there, like, I had to google whether Wiz Khalifa were featuring in it and I was like it was it was his fucking mouth yeah, we'll these strike. Uh, give that a quick yeah, search when we're done here definitely <laughs> we'll honestly here. watch it it's like the like literally it's the weirdest fucking bit in a music video I've ever seen. <laughs> I was like, what the so, fuck? So yeah, you've talked about yeah, your past of getting together. Let's go back to the present day then. So your new your new single, Phantasm. Scott, I think it does definitely has like a darker turn than your other songs. And not only in just like how heavy it is, but also some of the sound effects that you use and the overall atmosphere of the song. Like what inspired the track for you? What was, you know, not even just musically, but also like lyrically, like just run me through it. Jamie, well, you can, Mo- you most, of his, most of his lyrics are about like mental health issues anyway. Yeah. If you, if you like, it's open to interpretation basically. So I like to write so a lot of people can, oh, oh, I, I, I feel that, you know, I, I can yeah. understand that. that that's relatable. Um, yeah, basically that's it. Like I just splurge out whatever I'm feeling at the time, you know, and with lockdown and shit and being at work, because I work, I work at a hospital, it's very dark and it was very, a pretty shit mm. place to be. No, at that time, because obviously a lot of people passing away, and you know, you, you see a lot of dark shit. So that, that's where at least the lyrics came from. And then we all love horror, basically. Yeah. So that's like more of the tone we wanted to go down, more more of a like um Just dark cinema yeah, sort of vibe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like that's... like more like a less like a music video, more like a piece of visual content rather than like actually being you know, oh, this is a music video. We wanted to make it more like a a story and a start of a story, like a lot of his other videos are very similar at least story wise we've always had like a specific timeline um we're just following on with that and it's like yeah it seems to be working and that seems to be what we want to go down for the next couple of tracks i guess yeah yeah how long, how long it lasts yeah <laughs> yeah i thought that actually when i was listening to it it has like a horror movie sort of vibe about it there's some yeah. spooky turns in there so i appreciated that and i think it added to all the other things that were going on in the song as well yeah, and on on the subject of Phantasm, like obviously, is that like sort of inkling at a uh, EP later on this year? Because obviously, I know you released it in June. Um, are you are you working on more stuff in the background, rearing up to get one out? We well, you could say that. Yeah, <laughs> could say that. There's, there's, there's something coming. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we'll we'll keep it quiet for now. But yeah, we are working on stuff in the background. Yeah, a few things. Awesome. We've, got, we've got some, us, uh, yeah. We've, we've got some shit coming in the near future. Yeah, there's there's enough giving us sleepless nights. That's, that's, uh, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, there's there's yeah, there's things on the horizon that are slowly making their way through the woodwork. So yeah, speak. it's like not no, not to just a bit coy for like coy's sake sort of thing. It's just that it's not doing it. Yeah, we well, <laughs> it, yeah. We initially it started out as like an album that we were gonna do, and then it's like we split into two EPs, or like we're gonna do an EP, or we're just doing one EP, and then we do. It's yeah. At the minute, there's there's something planned. Whether it like turns into five, six, yeah, ten tracks, it, whatever it is. Yeah, it all came out of lockdown, didn't it? Really, yeah. like we we were gonna do like an album, and then lockdown happened. We were like, all oh, right, okay, we can't really be together to write a 13, 14 track album. Yeah, so let's just write a what couple, we can. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, let's just write what we can yeah, when we can, and and release it when we can. Yeah, cause we, just... we we like to go. If you've seen like the rest of the music videos, and like obviously Phantasm as well, like we're trying to. I guess up the game on our behalf, visually, and a lot of the stuff is like we couldn't 
we just couldn't do what we wanted to visually. Um, yeah. As well. Like we, we thought there's no point in putting just a song out at the moment, like with a lyric video or something. Lyric videos are pretty much dead these days anyway. And like, it just is what it is. Like if no one's going to watch it or if we're not proud of what we're putting out visually, then what's the point of putting it out? Yeah. So, so we thought we'll just wait until we can do it right instead of kind of rushing it. Cause yeah. we, we did initially plan a lot of the, video for phantasm for my aquatic which came before it but because of lockdown we had we just couldn't get together to like film the the cinematic parts and what have you so it, yeah. it ended up being more of a yeah. you know the the band shots in the rain sort of thing which we did and if you do watch my aquatic you'll notice we're all like a meter and a half at least away <laughs> yeah. from each other at all and then, times then solo <laughs> shots it was, just, it was an awkward one but um cold one yeah it was a cold yeah. wet awkward night but yeah um so we wanted to Wanted to just wait until we could do it right, essentially, instead of putting out something half-assed. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, that's what I wanted to ask anyway, you know, about the video, because obviously vis- visually is, is a very important part of being in a band and anything, really. Um, what was, like, the creative process behind that? And, you know, how did it all come about and what inspired it? Oh, the music, really. Yeah, yeah, the, the music. music to justify how dark it sounded. It had to match visually. Yeah. Yeah, there was, there was a lot of, like, sort of horror sound effects as you've sort of picked up on in the writing process. So like that just kind of inspired the visual direction of the of the music video. And we can if you really look into it sort of thing, it connects into the previous music videos that we have done if you want to yeah. if you want to really look into it. We like to sort of leave little Easter eggs and connect them in, in little ways, mm. but nothing that really yeah. No, I like that to be honest. Like it's I think it was a it was a pale face that we spoke to Nerf that like they do like a lot of continuations and Easter eggs and like some of the music and the albums and yeah, the music videos. They've literally just finished chapter three and that's apparently like the last chapter in there. Like a little yeah. It's um, always hard to find out where you want to finish and yeah. Yeah. how far you want to go with it as well without it being too much, you know. Yeah. Um, getting cringe, so well, that's it, without getting cringe. Yeah. And it's so difficult to do like a horror a horror <laughs> sorry, a horror theme. <laughs> So difficult to do like a horror themed video yeah. without actually being cringy, especially with like, yeah. you know, we're working with Steve from Britta Point Media, who is like ridiculously good at filming and directing yeah. anyway. But being a small budget thing, it's um, it's hard not to do it like B movie. We try to do it as professional as we can without it yeah. being like super cringe, which you know some people might find it cringy, but. I think, I think it turned out quite well, to be honest with you. Yeah. I think like the most important thing to do when you're working on a budget is work, utilize what you've got. Like yeah. if you if you think that you don't want to go too ambitious like and you know that it's not going to look good if you try and like mimic something else then it's not going to work but if you're like okay this is what i've got and i'm going to utilize this to the max and that's when you come out with the best produced stuff so yeah it's it's like when uh, me and brad recently did a, a music video for one of our friends um and we literally on did it on quite a low budget like there was like a bit where he wanted you know like someone laid out cut in half um <laughs> this is disgusting and, by the way <laughs> yeah no I couldn't eat meat. I couldn't eat meat for about a week after that um, because <laughs> literally, like, so, like, Carl, was like, oh, you know, like, he did. He wanted to more direct the bit rather than be in the bit because he wanted to yeah. really, really sell this visual. Um, and we actually got real pig organs. Nice um, for for the video. And guess who was the guy cutting half? Me. Um, so we literally got like a you know like a what you use when you plast the like pit of wallpaper in a room, cut a hole in it. I got in, sat on a drum stool, leant back a bit, and then just fucking poured all these these guts all over me. The smell was stuck in my nose for about a week. I'm not, yeah. I couldn't eat meat. I couldn't stomach it. There was like a moment there was like, we, we went to a butcher's and went, just give us like the gnarliest shit you've got. And like, he went, <laughs> he went, I've got some pig arsehole if you want that. And I was there like, yeah, fuck it. Throw the pig arsehole in there. And there was like a moment where like, I realised the pig arsehole on my stomach and I was just giggling to myself like, eh, there's a pig <laughs> arsehole on my stomach. <laughs> yeah, the butcher was like, it's bigger than what you think. I was like, great, okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> I was behind the fucking really, camera. What really annoyed me about that is like, he went, it's bigger than you think and he completely missed the joke. So I'm like, oh, so it's not just the starfish, it's the full arsehole then. And yeah. like, he just, what, he didn't even like acknowledge it. <laughs> Absolutely gross. <laughs> yeah, it, it was... Right, but uh, yeah, it, it was fucking, it was funny as fuck. But um, I remember seeing you guys at the Black Tongue gig um, about a week or two ago. Um, yeah, yeah. And I know that you guys mentioned it with your first gig since lockdown. Like, yeah. what was the feeling like being back on stage? 
shit in my pants. Yeah, <laughs> like the whole week before, just pure fear. Like, I've, I've never got stage fright or like anxiety before shows before. Well, be, in a long time, I, sh- I should say, like, back because I've been gigging, gigging since I was like 14 or something like that in, in really shitty old bands, sort of thing. But it at least gets it out of my system, like all that stage mm. fright and what have you. And then it was having like, like two yeah. years off on it, like yeah, having like years, 20 God. months off and. We've never had that amount of time, even probably any of us since. I think we've all been in bands since we were quite young. Yeah. And I think we've yeah. never had that amount of time off in yeah. my, from like being like 10, 12 years old. Yeah. Even when I had a breakdown and fucking quit music for ages, <laughs> like still only about a year, but that's. Yeah. yeah but it was good, man. Was as soon longer, as soon yeah. as we got on, I think it all kind of melts away. As soon as you yeah. hear that first build up to the, to the intro, it's just, yeah, it's gone, man. And it's like, it felt like nothing was different at all. It felt yeah, like yeah. it was. We'd played last week, you know. So, yeah, as well. Like, it, it, there's such a good atmosphere around gigs at the moment. Like, I've been to a few since they were allowed to come back, and like, it feels a lot more like positive. Like, yeah. everyone's like just happy to be there. Yeah. I, because I, I remember before lockdown, like shows would kind of be like, you get quite a few dickheads, like where they're like, oh, you know, like, and like now it's kind of like more like ah, people just actually happy to actually be able to go yeah. out of their house yeah. and into mm-hmm. a gig. We realised that everyone um, really nice, weren't they? Yeah, everyone were really yeah. nice. So we're good. I mean, they want they want as much movement as we expected, but I think I, I, I said that, that was uh, that was because it, it was a Sunday. Apparently, apparently it's like that at the Key Club on Sunday. With but, it, with it being black, yeah, tomorrow, I thought people yeah, were, like, I, kicking shit. Yeah, out not not even just for us, sort of thing. I was like, all oh, right, maybe they don't like us too much. But then Black Tongue came on, and like we're like, they're not moving for Black Tongue. Yeah, no. Like, Right. I remember being in the crowd and when they did the like the end bit where it's like everyone in this room is a fucking target. I was there yeah, like, yeah. something's going to happen. No, no, no one moved. Nothing happened. Yeah, no, no one moved. All right. All I right. Literally... Oh, thanks for that. <laughs> I, to be fair, I like to have a little mosh to myself, right? And I was there like every like, moment, I was there, like, I want to jump in and I'd look and go, there's literally Nothing no one moving. <laughs> like, yeah, there's yeah. literally no I was like, you know, you need someone to start it off. <laughs> like, there's only so much egging on you can do. Like, I try to bring people forward as well. Like, I don't know if you saw, but I jumped into the crowd and tried to push yeah, yeah. people forward, and people were still, like, just stood there. And I was like, come on, man. Like, you, got, you got to give us something to work with, at least. Yeah, we're, we're like, after, after the show, to the guy we were running, we're like, is that, has it been like that since COVID? Like, is it a social distance thing? And we're like, no, it's just Sundays, man. I'm like, what the fuck? People are miserable on Sundays. Miserable on Sundays. <laughs> like, all right, fair enough. The, f- the thing is as well, there's a lot of dad moshes I noticed. You know, like when they're like, yeah, fucking come on. But the minute someone like stood anywhere near them, like, oh, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sunday, guys. You know the rules. Fucking Sunday. It's the day of God. And you're trying to push me. Fuck off. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it was kind of that sort of, like, thing. Uh, expect someone um, in the crowd to be like, I'm a smash face! Play, I'm a smash face! <laughs> did you hear that? Did you hear yeah, that just, complete that's fucking... That's death metal freebird, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> but did you... <laughs> oh, God, God, yeah. No, that's that's one of my favourite, like, if going back to the tour stories, Jesus Christ, it again on that Scotland tour. <laughs> me so it cuts down to this part where there's, it's on youtube somewhere if you search I, isolate the witness live scotland <laughs> don't look, don't, don't. <laughs> but do it's not us no. uh, but yeah there's this bit where it sort of drops down and it just goes to a backing track sort of synth sort of thing like really like 2008 asking alexandria sort of shit and then sam the other guitarist he does this uh this like nice heartfelt clean singing part but there's just this one scottish gremlin right at the front looking him dead in the eyes and you hear him on video just going no clean singing. No no clean singing. Just dead in his fucking eyes. I'm like, I don't know how he's carrying on, man. Yeah, Sam, Sam's got some balls, man. I wouldn't have he fucking on. did, though. Did, did, did oh, yeah. you hear that last that, like, was screaming so loud at one point I could hear him over black tongue? Like, it, it was like she'd just had her first beer. Do you know what I mean? I was there like... I'm not even kidding. I turned around and all I could hear was just like this high pitched yelling, like, do you want to like grab the mic and have a go? Because fuck me, love. Like, you know, I, I mean, like, cause I, I, couldn't, I couldn't hear Black Tongue over. I could just hear this really high pitched ringing in my ear. I was like, like, oh, have I got tinnitus? No, it's her. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't hear that. We were, I was stood at the. Uh, I would sound desk. Too, too old to be moshing these days, man. Like, I'd mosh for like 10 minutes and my back hurts for like three weeks afterwards. Like, so, oh man, yeah, our, our set just killed us off. Like, it's been a while before that was like a sort of weekly, bi weekly, like cardio workout, and then it's just been mm. a year and a half of doing fuck all. I'm like, <laughs> well, <laughs> after the second song, 
Oh, well, Sunday, it was my, my friend Braddon. It was his last, uh, his band's last show in, in um, Leeds before they, they like, break, oh, they that, break uh, up. Was San- that Santiago's? Yeah, yeah, it was oh, a yeah. Malign gig. Um, yeah. So I had to give it a bit extra welly because it was my mate. I was like, I'm going to give it some extra welly. <laughs> And that's how I did this to my fucking nose. Oh, no. <laughs> and then, like, my fingers turned fucking black. Um, <laughs> Definitely going to so lose yeah, that fingernail, mate. <laughs> probably going to lose it, yeah. That's good. Like, but I was, like, hey, I was like, if I don't proper go for it, you know, I, I need to give him a good send-off. So I went a bit I went, went a bit nuts. A few <laughs> of them, uh, like, a few more of my mates' bands, they played, like, final words and stuff. So I, I gave it a bit more extra welly for them as well. But yeah, oh, yeah, after that, I was fucked. <laughs> Not surprised, to be honest. Um, <laughs> so, obviously, when you're on tour, you have some bad scrum. So, if you've been, if you played a gig, if you've been out in a different city, it uh, doesn't have to be if you're all together, but what's the worst tour scrum you've had? Oh, in Sheffield. <laughs> Classic. There's this place opposite uh, Mulberry. Mulberry, and it's just like <laughs> it's, it's we're, just we're, shits we're, in a bag. Yeah, we'll probably get into scrutiny for this, but it's literally like it just you, the smell of it gives you the shits. Ne- never mind eating it. Do you know what I mean? It's one of those what's, ones, what's the place? Because I've uh, I used to study in Sheffield, so I don't know a few places. It's not a clue. Do you, do you know Mulberry Tavern just down from the O2? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Opposite yeah. there on the right hand side. Directly across road from that fucker. Yeah, it's just. I like, look out for it. I'm not good. <laughs> yeah, I, I've like, got. A, I've got a bit of a funny story involving Mulberry with fucking Brad. Do you remember, Brad? Oh, God, yeah. It was his 21st now, birthday. Yeah. yeah, it was 21st birthday. He got absolutely shit-faced. Um, and this guy that we know was, like, showing us the way to fucking Mulberry. And he got us to Mulberry, but Brad was convinced that he didn't know the way. So the entire way, Brad was just saying to himself, this cunt doesn't know the fucking way. He's going to get us lost. <laughs> and, like, he was full on, like, being by, like, like a silent savage in the back. And I was like, Brad, just calm down. We're going to get there. We get there. He's like, oh, he did. He did go the way, didn't he? <laughs> and I was like, of <laughs> course he fucking did. Why would he say he knew the way if he didn't? Yeah, um, messy night. But yeah, I have tried some food in Sheffield and it's been horrendous. Yeah. Like, uh, there's a Weatherspoons in Sheffield that I ate there once and the entire week I had like these awful stomach cramps, instantly had the shits as well. It was fucking awful. I was like, anywhere in Sheffield, I'm not eat- risking it. The only place that's safe is Taco Bell. Not even Taco Bell gives you a shit, man. Yeah, I can't, can't trust anyone in Sheffield. <laughs> At least Leeds is decent because, like, across from Keys is like McDonald's, Taco Bell, like KFC. KFC. There's everything like around Key Club that you could just not risk getting the shits from. Oh, yeah. Leeds is mint as well because everything's like in a five minute walk. Yeah. Like, radius yeah. of anywhere. In the train station, you can get from like the venue to the train station within 10 minutes, like three if you run. <laughs> Tell you what, the thing that annoys me about Sheffield is that. It's smaller than Leeds, the city centre, but yet everything's so spaced out. I'm like, yeah, like, just put it together. You've got no air. You've got, like, one H&M, one KFC. So what's the point of fucking making them all five miles apart? Just put them together. So far away from everything, like, from the main, like, shopping bit slash, like, gig bit as well. Even, even like, parking, like, like, so we'd we'd, we'd load in (laughs) at Mulberry and then have to park, like, half a mile (laughs) away. By the uni. (laughs) Yeah. And then walk back to the venue. And like, then, like when we're loading out, same same thing, but backwards. Because you, you know, apparently, no fuck. venues anywhere are parking for for bands. Yeah, like, even if it's just like around the back. Yeah. I mean, I mean, just driving. Well, you know, I don't actually drive myself, but like just yeah, being being just... being in the car driving around Sheffield, like the roads are just so sporadic. Like they're all over the place. Like it doesn't make any sense. Like pretty much all, all the shops in Sheffield are kind of in a straight line, and you can maybe turn a little bit, and yet all the roads are like this. I'm like, what are you doing? Just change the layout. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I remember. I've, I've not driven to Sheffield yet myself. Like, uh, <laughs> oh, all right. It's a nightmare. It's, when it's horrendous. There's that big roundabout. None of it makes any sense. <laughs> nah, you know, it's the worst part about driving to Sheff- driving back from Sheffield because that, that motorway has no lights on it. No. What's so fucking ever? I remember like we, we did a practice in Sheffield once because uh, our guitarist, he has like a little room there that he rents. Um, so we're like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, we'll drive to Sheffield, have a practice. And I'm not even kidding, like, like morale were pretty high in the car, like all the way, like all the way through Sheffield. As soon as we got on the motorway, oh, oh, no one said a fucking word. It was that, <laughs> that fucking dark. We we're there, like we don't want to make, make Dan not concentrate and die. So we were there, like <laughs> we're just fucking quiet the entire time. 
Um, and because it's not fucking lit, there was like a little slip road we had to take up to get to get through the, to Leeds. And there were no indication that it was a big, the biggest fuck off turn. Like, so Danny's hitting it at like 60, goes off. And he's like, yeah, it'll be about 60 on this road as well. It's coming off a motorway. Nah, there's a fucking turn instantly. So he's there like fucking turning it with all his strength. And I was there like, I'm going to die in this car tonight. Ah, this, <laughs> this, is it. this is it. I can just see us fucking spinning and then that's it. I'm gone. Uh, luckily, we made it home in one piece, but I was, I'm not even kidding. A bit of poo came out. I <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking nightmarish. Um, what is like the most anticipated gig that you've got booked this year then? Like, what are you like looking at in your calendar going, I'm so excited for that? Well, at the minute, I think we've only really got well, we've just announced a gig in York uh, that we're pretty much booked over the past few days anyway. But besides that, um, we're playing Envisions in December at Key Club again. Um, yeah, we've been looking forward to that for quite a while. Yeah, literally like one of the first of that cancelled. <laughs> right? Well, yeah, it was back like in, when was it in? I can't even remember when it was initially meant to be, like Wait, May 2020. Yeah. And then it got pushed back and then it got pushed back and then it got pushed back and then it got pushed back. So... Yeah, we're anticipating that one. It should be good because uh, a number of the other shows are sold out. Like Leeds is always yeah. kind to us. So, Envisions is always, yeah, always, always mad. sick guys as well. So, yeah, it's, love Envisions. It's nice to be with bros again, I guess, and yeah. see everyone. Yeah, exactly. That we've not seen since lockdown. Yeah, because obviously, like Envisions are really good mates with like us and yeah. like yeah. Values lot and the on hologram lot. Every, pretty much all the Leeds scene and what have you. So, everyone comes down for like the Envisions show. So it's it's just nice to. Nice to get all the lads together. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think the most disappointing thing about like gigs is that you get so many now that have been postponed like three times and then they come back now and you get an email saying, Oh yeah, we've decided to not go ahead with it all. So all, after all this time, I mean I can't blame them to be honest. Like it must be so difficult, especially if you're coming from like Europe or America, but I'm like, oh yeah. two years to say you can't come. Yeah, yeah. Nah, but I, too fair though. I, go on. Uh, like that is murder has just been changed again and now I'll yeah. play and I'm gutted man because I will literally just like it's nice to see nice to see die out but I'll literally go out and see Alpha Wolf because I've missed him like four times yeah and, so, and I've yeah. I want to see Malev again Malev oh yeah, yeah. they're Sheffield boys aren't they yeah, yeah. they are I, was, I, I had the tickets to their you know their um video shoot gig yeah, um, yeah. but last minute I had no one to go with and I, I was like I can't make it all the way to you've gone by yourself motherfucker no, I, I, you know what the <laughs> thing is? With, like, with, with shows, I need to have at least like one person there because I, I I've been to like a couple gigs on my own. I've always found it like very awkward. I'm always like kind of stood down. Yeah, you are, yeah. I used to go to a lot of gigs when I was like younger. The last time I saw my level like Santiago's with TRC, it was like a secret show. So oh, damn. imagine my level TRC in like a 70 cap venue. It would Oh yeah, that great. sounds amazing San, to be honest. Santiago's is so yeah, fucking TRC, small yeah. and all. Malev, TRC. TRC, I can't remember who else played, but yeah, it was crazy, man. It was really, really good. That was last, like 2017, 18, maybe. Well, before like they decided blowing up, really. But yeah, they, they, it was sick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was saying with like obviously the travel restrictions, I said in a weird way, it's good for the local scene because that means there's a lot more opportunity for like small bands to get recognized but people just go i want to see a gig i'm just gonna go to this one and then like they'll get exp- like it'll help out the local scene massively because um, yeah. i think that's one thing the uk lacks a little bit yeah hopefully that there'll be i mean it's a hard one to say but like there's i think there's less scope for with brexit as well as like covid as well like there's less scope for like european bands and other bands so like i expect there's just going to be less of them even on tour packages so it'll probably just give Instead of seeing like, oh, there's here's two European bands in the space for like one opener, or sometimes not even that. Like, it it just give like other locals the chance yeah. to actually like what Black Tongue did yeah. when like they did their tour. There, I think they had local openers for every single yeah. show they played. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bear is, sick for them guys. Bear yeah. played with them up in Scotland. Yeah, yeah which is sick. Lads. Sick for local bands, and it. Yeah, exactly. It was busy as fuck, man. Like, I, I didn't think it was gonna be that busy at Keys. Yeah, I, I, I doubted it just purely because of COVID. Not like doubting Black Tongue or us or <clears> like. Yeah. any of that lot but just i didn't know how it was going to go yeah. especially being first gig like are people going to come out for it because sunday yeah and, and it being a sunday, sunday i mean even yeah. i'm like I, i'm skeptical to like i fucking adore any shikari um like but i before covid i'd seen him every year for like going on like seven to like probably 10 years to be fair and like 
even now they've announced tickets for December and I don't want to buy them because I'm like, are we going to go into another lockdown? Are we going to, are they going to get cancelled? What's the restrictions going to be? So you I'm want like, to go on that many people? Like, exactly. Yeah, that, you know, that's the thing. Even, even I'm worried about that. So I was quite worried about how people are going to be for like some, in the grand scheme, fairly unknown bands at Key yeah. Club. But as far as we're aware, no one tested positive, which is good. Yeah, so we're all good. There's been no connections between any more positive tests, which is good as well. So, I mean, yeah. to, be, to be fair, like I saw, um, I saw Bring Me in, in Hull. Uh, that was like a week and a bit ago, and uh, <laughs> I was like, "Why do you pick Hull? You don't come to Leeds. You don't come Sheffield. Well, I think they came Sheffield actually, but they didn't come Leeds." I'm like, "What? Come on!" But they did. They did Hull like the arena, so I was surprised to see that everything felt normal there because you know the local shows. I imagine it doesn't really matter about restrictions. You know, I probably don't need a, a vax. You know, the the test to go in, even though Key Club does, but I know a lot of the venues yeah. are doing that. I've not I've not played too many. Well, I've not played or been to many other venues to be fair but yeah key club being his first experience of what they're expecting yeah but well, uh, that's why and whatever, but. that's why i was surprised that whole arena didn't actually need you to get a test to go in you just walked in really? it's a bit weird yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that, that, that is club. actually a bit weird then again it's whole like like yeah. you're probably going to catch something else probably there, started though. there to be honest yeah it probably started <laughs> in Hull. Um, from china to hull well, that's where it went yeah yeah straight <laughs> it's on top hull. Who was the point where it got its strongest? <laughs> and then it just went across the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say that, yeah. Okay. Straight up mutated in Hull. Yeah. Hull variants coming around. Hull variant. And that'll be the di- most dangerous one. Yeah. Like, yeah, if yeah. it survived Hull, mate. That's it for humanity then. I mean, if anyone wants to book us in Hull, we will definitely play. Yeah. But um, We'll take it back to the words. <laughs> yeah, that's um, great. What, what are you on about? <laughs> So I want to talk, obviously, we talked about your music, your touring. I want to ask about your personal life. So like, what hobbies and interests do you guys have that people might not know about you? That's you, mate. Go on, that's all you. Uh, yeah, I think he's got the most interesting hobby slash personal life slash job. I make lightsabers. That's awesome. What the fuck? <laughs> I lay in a milling machine and stuff and turn them out of aluminium and have like sound bars in them and big blades and shit like that. It's sick. Revan yeah. Sabres. Revan, yeah, Revan, is it Revan, Revan underscore? Sabres. Yeah, Revan underscore. Revan, if, you, if you search on Instagram, Revan underscore Sabres, you'll see, like, he's ridiculous. Nathan's about to cream his pants. He's like the biggest Star Wars fan ever. He's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he's sorting out, uh, like, soundboards on him and every, all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's pretty sick. Every week he brings thought? like a new saber to practice, and we're like, "Can I have a play? Can I play?" How the fuck did you get into that? Like, that's such a cool job. I've never heard anybody doing that. So, what happened? <laughs> I ended up losing my job, like before COVID, like just before COVID, for some bullshit reason. To, you can, somebody who managers being assholes as usual. Yeah. yeah. And um, I'd seen that there were another company in the UK doing it, but it, it made them quite poorly and yeah. shit like that. So uh, used what last bit of money and stuff, got a lave, and then just started from there. So I, I thought like I would definitely have a go at making them better than these ones. As big as that sounds, but, but, but you fucking did. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah you've yeah. done it. I think rest of it is just it's just music in it, work and yeah, music. music really. Yeah, I mean, this is like our hundred percent everything. Yeah, that's put into yeah, this. yeah, that's absolutely just, just music. Uh, I mean, I guess I guess I keep fish. That's that's a vibe. Everything besides <laughs> besides besides music, I keep fish. Yeah. That's about it. And I like going for walks in the lakes yeah. with my lass, but that's about it. Yeah, music and. That's it, pretty much. Yeah, none of us go like skydiving or he's the most <laughs> just a lightsaber over here. They're like through the sky with lightsabers flying through that's, that's 15 cool. feet in the air. I mean, could like a general grievous man and get like yeah. far out. I've got a really accurate Jedi costume, so we're, uh, we keep saying I need to do like a, like we need to get Steve from Breakpoint Media to do like a, an, an advert for him with, with me in costume and what have you, but. We need to find a way of using his music video. Yeah, we need yeah. to find yeah, some yeah. Yeah. Well, have you ever thought about making an isolate uh, lightsaber, though? I have, actually. I've made you one, not I? Yeah, he's it, it, made me one with like, the logo etched into it. Which is that. Oh, yeah. mate. Yeah, that, 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 that one. Is. Yeah, that's etched into it. Um, But... Imagine you could do oh, yeah, if you could do an actual logo. <laughs> mate, you could have the soundboard, so instead of the lightsaber sounds, it's just a blech. Okay. <laughs> well, we, we've been picking about with some soundboards and like I put yeah. some uh, some stupid sounds. That like, was just me like speaking, like just to make sure because like it, it's all um, like you put it in like swing, like it'll do swing one and swing two. So like just me talking, going swing one, swing two. And it's like swing one, swing. One. <laughs> <laughs> it's like really shit, Harry Potter. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> Do you get to keep like a lot of them for yourself then, if you make them? No, no, like, because I've got like an Etsy shop that I sell them all through. So, all right. I've spent all the world and out a minute. So, I get to look at them for a bit and then they have to go. But, but you've got you've got your personal one. Yeah, I've got one personal one. That I keep pissing about without sound and then everything, and try and get all working. But that's super dope. That's so cool. Yeah, that is really cool. <laughs> that is really cool. I'm jealous. Um, <laughs> what like on sort of the on on like the subject of your merch, it's fucking unreal, guys. Love the mm. like the sort of the Japanese style of it. Um, what's your plans for like merch in the future, and like what's your process for designing and making it normally? It's all in house, pretty much. It's all yes. in house designed by this lad and his girlfriend. Yeah, so far it's it's been pretty much all in, yeah, all in house. Um, purely because we're we're fucking poor. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. we mm. can't afford on a budget, man. We, like some bands can just throw hundreds of hundreds of quid at a merch yeah. line, and we can throw, we can't. We just, yeah, we, you know. we we can barely afford to get them printed at times. So it's like. You know, we we've got we can't afford another fifty, hundred, hundred and fifty, however much it is for people to design them. So we just kind of do what we can. Like the guys will, got, really. yeah, yeah the guys the guys will throw in some ideas. I, I I can throw enough together, I guess. Um, it's it's been working. Yeah, it's for worked us. so um, far. But I think the next yeah we lot, are, we are wanting to get like yeah the next lot will probably be outsourced. Yeah, just a bit. Not saying it doesn't look professional because it does. Yeah, no, no, it does. Just, but to just, just to get a different vibe yeah, to it as it, well. Yeah. Just um, because a lot of people are doing like the traditional tattoo sort of style, like like an arch with roses or, you know, like a skull with a knife through its head and things like that. And I don't think we've done anything like that, really. I think we've been quite out of the box with the yeah. colours and putting the logo and then obviously with the, the kawaii thing with the the, the uh, little pocket tee. And then obviously the back piece on the hoodie. Um, so I don't know. I'm a little bit adamant to go into like outsourcing unless we're going to find someone that's like out of the box because we don't want to, Again, not to sound big headed, but we don't want to follow the norm. We kind of want to lead our own path. And if, if it fails, it fails. But if it goes right, it goes right, doesn't it? It's, people take notice of things when they're different, I guess. But yeah, I mean, not, not to like blow smoke up you guys' ass, but I've, I've seen like obviously a lot of the massive bands, like they do like like the generic album cover for the T-shirt. And it's not it's not the kind of thing that I like to wear. And I think like nowadays, like a lot of bands are trying to push and go outside the box and try and make merch that actually looks more like an actual clothing brand than it just yeah. does like, oh, here I'm, I'm representing this band. So I appreciate that you guys do that. Don't even, don't even get oh oh issues. Thank you very much. That, is, that seems to be the way you have it to is. go these days. You know, yeah, yeah. You, you have to make a impact. Hey, hey, hey. nice. So we got. Here's them lights. Let's let's give him a little. Give him a little. Uh, where, where's the logo? If you can see. Represent. Let's carve the logo oh. into. All that. All that. All that. Uh, it's gorgeous. Ages ago, they were yeah, he made these like this is one some of his first some of the first ones that he did make and they got these. Oh man. Yeah. Plug in. Yeah, plug, plug us by, aren't we? Revan underscore Sabres. Get to know. If you don't know. If you're watching, hook yourself up. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I was just uh, saying, in Architects, when they released the, that most recent album, I'm not, not particularly a fan myself, but um, of that album. Love Architects, not the latest album. Um, but yeah, I, I know they've got the whole astronaut theme on the on the cover. That's the, that's the little a astronaut guy in the church. Mm. And they released the, the merch line for it. And I were raging in the band chat to these guys. And it's literally just a black T-shirt. It's not a polo. I thought it was a polo initially. It's just a black, normal, like, Gildan-ish T-shirt with an embroidery of the 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 astronaut on the pocket. Very small, maybe, you know, like, uh, if I could, uh, yeah, maybe about a year big, so nowhere near as big as this. Yeah. Tiny, maybe about the size of a 20 pence piece. And it was 45 quid. <laughs> Nothing on the back. Nothing else on the front, just that little embroidery, 45 quid. I'm like, how the fuck are they selling these? And I looked up the shirts as well. So it was like on AS print or something like that. I can't remember. But it, it said on the site, these are printed on such and such shirts. And I looked at them at bulk buy and they're like four pound each to buy. And like the embroidery is like two quid for something like that or something like that. And I'm like, they're making a fucking mint off that. That's ridiculous. And people pay it. That's a fortunate I mean. thing. What, what, what the f- like literally smaller than the fucking Ralph Lauren logo. <laughs> oh, like how stupid their prices. It's like what the fuck, man. And then people complain at small bands, but like when oh your t-shirts are fifteen quid. Like 
yeah, sorry, mate. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the not... difference is, like, you know, small bands need it more. Like, architects yeah, architects are fucking loaded. You know, he's probably driving home in his Porsche from the studio. Yeah. And then, like, and then he's like, oh, yeah, 45 quid. Just, I don't know, slap, like, a one centimetre symbol on there. That's, that's, that's all right. Like, we've, we've got to put, like, a lot of effort. Like, we've got to have these huge designs and then, like, get loads of colours. And obviously, the more colours, the more it costs. And, yeah. like, just to get people to, like, even be like, ooh, like, like, I might think about and that. Make, make, like, a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to make like like two to five to maybe to maybe maybe ten pound profit off it, and then it's like, and then architects can stick like <laughs> this thing on a fucking t-shirt. And yeah, of course I'm bitter. I'm, gonna take <laughs> I'm, I'm, very, I'm very I'm very bitter. bitter. Oh, it just feels lazy to me. It's just lazy. I'm on, yeah. Well, on the subject of architects, did you hear about that Belgian band that like full on ripped off the uh, album art for architects? Yes, yes. I saw that. <laughs> so poorly so done and on the nose. When they're like, nah, but we planned it at the same time and it just happened <laughs> to release after that. It's like, both fucking shit. <laughs> we have architects at home. That's <laughs> basically what it is. <laughs> it literally what it was like, you fucking pound shop architects. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, is there like, yeah, <laughs> you, you know, just put a bit of tin fire on his knees. It'd be right. You look like an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It was literally a bit of that. <laughs> like, yo, where are my boys at Wish at? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to show you off the man. It's so bad. So bad. It literally looks like it like compared to the two, it literally looks like those wish memes where it's like what yeah. I ordered, what I've got. Yeah, it's when you buy architects off wish. <laughs> <laughs> Not buy architects off a wish. Yeah, yeah no, I don't. <laughs> they got that much backlash, backlash. They're like, yeah, we'll change the album cover. I'm like, fucking damn right. It's so on the nose. Didn't it? Wow. I saw that band that got um that completely ripped off to uh two way mirror by love. I don't know if you uh, saw yeah. Yeah, they were like, yeah like I think female, I saw that female band that like completely ripped it off, and I was just like, "Fuck me, that's bad." That if you're gonna rip them off, you gotta be smart about it, aren't you? you gotta yeah. Rip- you, well, you either gotta rip them off and like be really blatant about it and embrace it, or you just gotta like do it well, well enough, hide it well enough. Yeah, like to be fair, the, there's so many like accidental rip offs as well because yeah, there's so many yeah. people doing like um, sort of similar designs. Like one thing I've noticed start popping up is you know like when someone gets like that 4k image of a fucking like lava and then they they put it onto photoshop and they add like an overlay onto it so it looks like it kind of looks like the spirit you know like the spirit box album i'm noticing like album art like that yeah. like pop yeah, up yeah. way more oh, yeah, like, I know what you mean. with like oh they ripped off that mic nah mate i think they just went eh, let's just do something like that that blue yeah, that's <laughs> yeah it's like just it's like Nah, I don't think that they, I think there's just some someone along the lines that was a graphics designer just kind of accidentally had the same idea at yeah, some yeah, point. So, oh, well, like, yeah. <laughs> Fuck it, I'll just put this shit into Photoshop. It's probably the same stock image and been like, no, no. Nah. Yeah, that's blue. the thing. A lot like... of times, sometimes it'll be like, oh well, I can't. I kind of I need something like this. You'll go on Google Images and then pick like the third one and then not realize, oh shit, everyone, everyone's gonna pick the third one from Google Images. <laughs> So I'll use this one, but just turn down the brightness by 10. There that's, we go. That's, that's <laughs> just yeah, yeah, just flip it. It's like, nah, that, it's pointing to the left on that photo. Completely original idea, mate. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, we are sort of getting to the end point of the interview now. One way that we always like to leave it is what advice would he give to younger selves just starting out and what advice would he give to a band that's just starting? Go big or yeah, go home. Yeah. Put so as much can't. time as you can into your craft before you show anyone yeah, outside would... of your little circle because what you produce is there forever, man. Yeah, like, it's 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 a, it's a case of I mean, back in the day, it used to be like, yeah, play as many gigs as you can and like do like go out and just go out and get your name out there. But like, it's a completely different landscape these days. Um, like, if you haven't got a music video, no one cares. If you haven't got like top quality production like pretty much no one cares except for except for your mates you might get some you know good feedback off your mates but like when obviously when you're going out gigging with the rest of the people and that you you just you'll find out real real fast what's what the problem is yeah um, yeah yeah it's, it's just like just put effort into it like i know it like it's hard to say and sound like a snob and be like just throw money at it but it's not from an AX, we're fucking poor. Like yeah, we, we're, we're all we, really we're, we do everything we can on right. as, as little of a budget we can. But like, uh, as long as you put effort into it, like yeah, everything for us is self-funded as well. It's like we're, we're not signed to a label. Everything's DIY. Um, we're all on minimum wage jobs. Just yeah, you can yeah, like I said before, you kind of just gotta give it your all and hope for the best. Really, like 
just get yourself a good group of guys or girls or mates or whatever you want to do and just sit down and really, really, really make sure this is what you want to release. Go over, go over the tracks you've recorded with producers and with your mixers and masters before you release it and make sure it's really something you're, you're proud of because that's what we do, I guess. Yeah. And it's we right. spend hours, hours and hours sat behind the computer, especially this guy, just synths and layers and vocals and you know just meticulously going through it second by second making sure everything's as good as it can be to the best of your ability it's all right yeah thank you so much guys and to be honest from what you just told me and just from seeing what you do with the merch and the the music and the videos like you you, you got your head screwed on and you put all your own to it and that's all that matters really you're, 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 you're feeling on it yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't make the same mistakes we made yeah, 10 but years ago. Also play a shitload of shows if you love it. That's, yeah. that's one because exactly. I, I miss playing shows so much and I, I want to play as many shows as you can. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's like, as long as you enjoy it at the end of the day. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Do it for yourself as well. Don't, don't, be, be, don't, don't do it to get yeah. signed and to be, I want to be famous and be this this guy. I want to be the next Dolly Sykes. I want to be the next, you know, fucking Tom Barber. Yeah. Yeah. Just, 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 just be yeah. proud of what you're putting out. That's that's yeah. that's what it is. Do, do like, it for could, you. Yeah, could you look back and you know, could you look back in five years' time and say, I'm I'm happy with what I've put out? Like because yeah. some of our old videos and stuff, like, you know, we we end up taking down or like we've we're not happy with like, you know, certain songs and you know, from songs, the first EP yeah. like and, and stuff like that. So you know, yeah. we've we've made those mistakes and stuff, so we we just realize we've got to just put everything into it. And, and don't be a cunt. Yeah. <laughs> don't, be, don't, don't, don't be don't be a pretentious asshole because <laughs> as as you can see, it's coming back to bite a lot of people, and a lot of people are getting yeah. cancelled. Just be humble and be nice. You know, yeah. it's not. <laughs> don't be a non space. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, another key one. Best advice: Don't be a non or street soldier. will be after you. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, onwards and upwards. That's the way to look at it. So, I mean, the one thing I'll be disappointed about if there's no isolate uh, lightsabers by the end of the year on sale. But I'm hoping in the future. <laughs> Pull some strings. <laughs> if you follow that Instagram page, you'll find out. You know. Yeah, <laughs> we all do. We'll keep our eyes open. But yeah, it's been a really good chat, guys, and um, hope to see you guys playing some gigs soon. And I know got to see you, so hopefully I'll catch you on the road as well. Oh, nice, yeah. nice to chat to you guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah good having you on, guys. Sweet.